Today we'll be starting a new chapter and it's about firms and production. This is a quick reminder of what we already took before. Whenever I'm talking about production, I will be thinking about the final product, which is my good or service, or I can call it an output. However, in order to reach that final product, I need to have inputs or resources. So what we do is my inputs or resources are the land, labor, and capital. When I join them together, they pass through a process of production, which is the entrepreneur, he is the one that organizes these inputs that we spoke about in order to achieve the end result, which is my output. Let's look at how my resources are adding value to the production. So for example, here is the before. I'm having some resources. I have water, I have some ingredients, and I have capital. However, when we join them together, they are producing my final product, which is a fizzy drink, and this is my good at the end that I am capable of selling. Okay? So when I'm talking about the resources, it's how much the firm is paying in order to produce these resources. And at the end, it is how much it is receiving by selling the end product. There are two main definitions that we need to take into consideration. The first one is called diversification. And diversification means when firms produce a range of different products in case consumer demand for any of them falls. So for example, they are not only producing one particular good because what if my consumers don't like it or they are not willing to buy it? If this is the case, they will buy the other product. Then I have another term which is called chain of productive activity. What I mean here is um, each chain of productive activity will link together many firms, industries, and industrial sectors. So mainly I would be talking about the economic sectors that we explained before and when they are integrating with each other. So I could be given an example about um, a farmer where he is planting uh, the wheat and then he is integrating with a factory manufacturing bread. And then this, uh, the bread making um, or the bakery would be integrating with a supermarket in order to sell the end product. Now let's be aware of some um, misconceptions. Candidates regularly confuse production, the term production with the term productivity. Okay, so let's be sure that you are clear on the difference and let's remember that production can rise when productivity may fall. All right, and um, this is a quick tip. Uh, uh, remember that production is output. All right. Whenever I'm talking about division of labor or specialization, I am talking about laborers doing what they are best at, okay? So each worker spe specializes in one particular task or operation in a certain production process, as you can see here, all right? Each one of them is responsible for a specific task. Now, some firms, they will increase productivity by doing specialization. Of course, whenever I'm talking about specialization, I would be talking about advantages and disadvantages. The advantage, advantages are as follows. It makes best use of an employee's abilities. It reduces time spent by employees changing tasks. I know what I'm doing, so that's it. I would be much faster at doing my particular job. And because I'm specialized and I know what I am doing, I am capable of using a machine and thus, when we use machine or capital, our output or our production at the end would increase. Now, the disadvantages is, since I am doing the same thing over and over again, my job might become boring. The second disadvantage, workers may lack pride in their work because they do not see the final result of their efforts, and I would call this alienation. 
And the third one is products become too standardized because we are doing something called mass production, which means they are producing in large quantities. I need you to remember when we are pro massively producing, it means the use of capital is a must. And therefore, when we are using machines, I would have standardized products, which means all products look exactly the same. How can we measure productivity? So let's have a look at um, the following um, image here. Um, I'm talking about three different countries, as you can see. And I am talking about um, cows and the production of milk. Here they are using 20 million cows in order to produce 33 million tons of milk. Here I am using 15 million cows to produce 37 million tons of milk. So if I was to measure productivity in these two farms, I would definitely say that China is more productive in the manufacturing of milk than Pakistan. Because as you can see, each on average, 2.47 tons of milk are produced per cow, whereas here I am producing a less amount, which is 1.65 tons per cow. So what do you think the formula would be in order to measure productivity? So now let's see how we measure productivity. Productivity, as they say, is it measures the amount of output, which is the good or service. And in our previous example, it was the amount of milk being produced that can be produced from a given amount of input. And in our previous example, we were talking about the number of cows. This was my input. And this is how I found out how productive each country is in the production of milk. Now, uh, as you can see in this example, here, for example, the average cost is 0 0.05, and here in this uh, uh, second example, it is the average cost is 0 0.04. So automatically, I would know that this would be more productive since they are using a lower average cost and the output that they are producing is much more than the previous example okay so as you can see the aim of any business will be to combine resources in the most efficient way in order to produce as much output as it can with the least amount of resources it can and therefore the lowest cost possible so let me write it down for you efficient use of resources also i am talking about more output in the least amount of inputs or resources so right now let's see how we can measure productivity whenever i'm talking about labor productivity I need you to think of it as being the most commonly used measure of factor productivity. It can be measured by something called average product of labor. So uh, we're measuring the average amount of output each employee produces per period of time, or by the average revenue which is the average amount of revenue each employee contributes per period of time as a result of his efforts. So for example, whenever I'm talking about product, I need you to remember I'm talking about goods. So it's anything that is tangible or with physical output. How do I calculate it? I do total output per period divided by the number of employees or laborers. The second way to measure uh, the productivity of labor is through revenue, and I would call it average revenue product of labor. Since I'm talking about services or intangible, so no physical output here, so for example, I'm talking about hairdresser salon and so on. What do I do is I do the total revenue per period over the number of employees. Now, I need you to remember that the second one, which is the average revenue product of labor, is a better method since labor productivity is not that accurate when it comes to services. Now, what are the problems when we are measuring productivity? 
First of all, services can be difficult to measure uh, because it doesn't take quality into consideration. Um, the second problem would be more difficult to measure when we are talking about an organization that does not produce a physical output or even revenue. So, for example, when I am talking about public hospitals or public schools, they are not producing a good, anything physical. And second of all, they are not producing uh, a service that generates revenue because if it is provided by the government, it means it is not generating any profits. It's not profit-oriented. The third problem would be it takes no account the quality of work which is related to the first one. How can firms increase productivity or improving productivity? So same amount of inputs, same costs, but more output. This is what I would want to achieve. I would always want to achieve a lower average cost per unit of production. What are the strategies to increase the productivity? It would be, first of all, to make your employees more productive. I need to train them in order to improve their skills. The second strategy would be rewarding increased productivity with performance-related pay. So, for example, the more productive you are, you would get an increment on your salary. The third one is when I like what I'm doing, so increasing job satisfaction, let your employees be happy. The happier they are, the more motivated they are, the more productive they will be. The fourth way would be replacing old equipment and machinery or capital with newer technologies because it would be producing in a faster rate. Then I have something called introducing new production processes to reduce waste and to improve quality and speed up production. This new production process, I would call it lean manufacturing in order to reduce waste. And I can do specialization or division of labor, or I would do something called factor substitution that we would explain in a second. So what is factor substitution? Here I would be explaining it by giving an example, replacing my own workers with machinery. So for example, here, um, if the productivity of capital equipment increases relative to labor, or if the cost of capital or machinery falls relative to the wage costs, then I would be substituting my workers with machinery. But we would be facing some problems or barriers. So for instance, the machines, first of all, they cannot replicate the work of a doctor, a lawyer, a hairdresser, or other workers providing personalized care and services. The second one would be, some firms cannot afford to install and maintain new machinery and technology because they would always have to pay for repair, for updates, and so on. So it's costly. The third one would be, some consumers want personalized and not mass-produced products which are standardized. Now I would like to explain something called CAM. CAM, it stands for Computer Aided Manufacture. What does that mean? Intelligent robots controlled by computers have taken over human tasks in manufacturing goods and services. So for example, when I am talking about the car assembly and food packaging, I would be using the CAM, which is computer-aided manufacture. So when I'm talking about factor substitution, I'm talking about the factors of production. Will I be using capital or labor? Now, I would add um, a link in the description about the video that I explained, labor or capital intensive. So is it more where we're using workers or is it more machinery? So you will be finding the advantages and disadvantages of both capital and labor in the other video. Now, what determines the uh, demand for uh, factors of production is also found in the uh, link that I put in the description. So that would be it for today. In our next video, we would be talking about the costs of production and how to calculate the different types of costs and how to calculate revenue and profit or loss.
please do not forget to watch the labor and capital intensive uh, video. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.